Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio Classics, where we take a look at some classic episodes of Dead Rabbit Radio with some new info. New info on the end. This is an episode that I very clearly remember recording. It's an episode that I had a lot of fun recording. It was basically, I think, one of the first episodes where I lost my patience in the story. And so it's definitely always, always had a fond place in my heart. And I think this episode shows a lot how the show's grown over the years. So as you're listening to, if you're a new listener of Dead Rabbit Radio or you've been listening all along, I think you'll notice some interesting things that I'm saying in this episode that I would not be saying today. This is really interesting. I was really, I really, I picked this episode as a classic because I loved it. But as I was listening to it, I go, wow, there's, I would have a different take, you know, 800 episodes later. And so that's cool. It shows how I've grown, shows how the show's grown. So let's go ahead and get started here with episode 121, KGB vs. Aliens. Did a voodoo warlord put a curse on his most hated enemy? Then we take a look at the KGB and a close encounter of the turned kind. And then we take a look at a man who made it his life mission to not only count but contact the aliens in our very own solar system that, by his estimate, numbered around 22 trillion today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you're having a great day too. I lied. I am having a great day. But it's snowing outside. I hate the snow. I hate everything that has the word snow in it. I hate snow cones. Th- those are quite disgusting. It's just water with gross Kool-Aid spilled on it. I hate snowboarding. I think it's kind of lame. Skiing's better, but I hate that too. I never saw the movie Snowpiercer, but if I saw it, I'd hate it. I hate Supreme Leader Snoke. Anything that has the word snow in it is terrible. Snowballs are pretty dumb. I'd rather throw a rock. And it's snowing outside right now. And I sometimes despise humanity for not being allergic to snow. Snow is nature's dandruff. And people always talk about, oh, snow looks so pretty. Okay, it does when it's hundreds of miles away on a mountain. I guess people don't have eyesight that good. When it's tens of miles away on a mountain, yes, snow is beautiful. But when you have to walk through it, it's terrible. And humanity... I wish we had never settled in areas with snow. The idea that a sentient species could go, this place is cold and inhospitable for two months out of the year. Let's live here. I wish everyone just lived in the desert, including me, despite as dangerous it is. You got Mongolian death worms and desert yetis everywhere. Cacti chasing you down the street. The uh, snowmobiles, yeah, I don't like those either. Well, I mean, comparatively, they're okay. But anyways, anyways, I like... The sound they make. But but other than that, and they kind of look cool with the treads, but whatever. I hate snow. I hate it all. Snow was a bad guy in Hunger Games. Nothing good comes out of snow. And snowmen, I know your secret. You're not really a snowman. You're just three balls of snow with some carrots on your face. Usually just one. I hate you, snow. Don't make me slip and fall on my way to work tomorrow. I hope you didn't hear me say I hate you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with this snowless episode. I'm never going to do a snow spiracy. Uh, we're going to move on to our next... Uh, our first story has no snow. It's a no snow zone. This is an interesting one. It's short, but it's still interesting. So a lot of you guys... Let me back up here for a second. So <laughs> back up and I haven't even started yet. Back in the 1980s, there was this voodoo priestess in Congo, I think. A place in Africa. There was, I'm still stuck on that Ebola episode. The There was a voodoo priestess in Africa. She saw that there was a civil war going on in a place. I don't remember the name of it, but that detail is not important. And she decided to exploit the divisions in this country that I don't remember. So she raised an army, but she didn't have any weapons. So she gave her army sticks, stones, and voodoo dolls. Spoiler alert, they got stomped. But her nephew, also a practicing voodoo, uh, whatever the term is, I know this episode's off to a great start. Also, well, he's a warlord, basically. Pra- also a practicing, he's a voodoo practitioner and a warlord. Let's say that. You know him. 
Everybody knows him. His name is Coney. So, Coney started the Lord's Resistance Army. It was a huge contingent of it was child soldiers that he kidnapped from villages, made the kids kill their parents so they'd have nowhere to go, so they had to stay in the army. Is brutal. He's a brutal, brutal man. He controlled them through fear and violence and voodoo. He's a practitioner of the voodoo religion. I don't know if it's called voodoo over there, but similar similar practices. I don't know. <laughs> similar. I'm okay. Listen, guys. I'm just reading articles on this stuff. Anyways, so if someone's like, no, no, it's not actually called voodoo. It's called this. I apologize. But anyway, so he uses dark magic. We'll say he uses dark magic. And fear and violence and all this stuff to control his army. Now, the reason why we know about Coney was back in 2012, there was that big social movement, Coney 2012. And Jason Russell had a group called Invisible Children. And his goal was to bring about the end of Coney and to free those child soldiers. Admirable goal. Admirable goal. And so they started this huge social movement and like people were changing their profile picture. It was called slacktivism because people were doing like very little things, but they felt really good about it because they were part of this Coney movement. The video... Invisible Children, I think it was called. The video that uh, Invisible Children produced was one of the most watched videos of that year. It was this huge phenomenon. And it did bring a bunch of attention to Coney. And people who had never heard of the civil strife, never heard of the child soldiers, never heard of any of that, were now aware of it. The eyes of the world were on Coney. Now, how do you strike at a target? Coney didn't have drones. He couldn't really send over a 12-year-old assassin with an AK-47. So how do you strike at an opponent? 2,000 miles away. Magic, of course. So, I mean, whether or not voodoo works, I think depends on your own personal beliefs. I'm personally not scared of voodoo. I don't think it would work. I, I, I know voodoo wouldn't work on me. I see it as something that is more something that you buy into the superstitions for it to work. But I could be wrong. I've never had anyone cast a voodoo spell on me. Maybe they did. Maybe that's why it's snowing. But what's interesting is you had Jason Russell... And Coney 2012 is blowing up, and everyone's looking at this guy, everyone's looking for him, and Jason Russell starts to have weird thoughts, we should say. Now, he is under a lot of pressure, because he went from being a nobody to being world famous like that. Like, it is very, very hard for a average person to become famous it's a lot of pressure it's super it's a super weird attack on the human psyche i think athletes it's interesting because athletes start off they're usually famous at their high school and then they go to college and now they're famous nationally to a certain degree but definitely in their state and then if they play pro ball now they're nationally famous but they have that slow build up of the fame whereas singers and actors and and activists and stuff like that politicians can become famous overnight and it can really really mess with you all of a sudden you feel self-important stuff like that but anyways so jason russell is this normal guy who now is world famous and he's feeling the pressure of it he's starting to have these weird thoughts he needs to take a break him and his family go on vacation they go to see the movie the lorax the movie about danny devito trying to get people to recycle and (laughs) that's a bad bad description of it but anyways which would have made it a better movie. He's in the Lorax and he's watching it. And he said he felt that the movie The Lorax was talking to him. And then he got this nugget in his head. Not literally, but he got this thought in his head. A kernel. Again, not literally. <laughs> in his head. That if he didn't get to New York within 12 hours, Coney would win. And becoming obsessed with this thought. He needs to get to New York in 12 hours. And then the next thing that happened was the famous footage of Jason Russell nude in public walking down the sidewalk, freaking out. People said that he was masturbating in public. That actually wasn't true. South Park made a big joke about that. That was kind of the meme. He wasn't doing that, but he was like doing jumping jacks and calisthenics and walking back and forth and muttering to himself and things like that. He went mad. He had a nervous breakdown. And the conspiracy theory is that that wasn't just because of the fame. That wasn't just because of the pressure. That was because of a successful voodoo spell that Coney actually cast on Jason Russell. It's an interesting theory, and there's not much to back it up. Really, the best evidence I found was from TMZ, where they were interviewing someone who knew Coney. I think it was a child soldier or someone who had worked in that region. He's like, oh yeah, no, that was totally a voodoo spell. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what it looks like. 
He was a voodoo spell got cast on him. That's what it looks like when you're cursed. So, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, in the realm that we live in, in the realm that Dead Rabbit Radio exists in, and all the crazy stuff we talk about it, that's not the craziest thing I've ever heard of. It is interesting because after that, Jason Russell became a meme. Coney pretty much disappeared from the spotlight. Invisible Children's still around. It's still trying to free those soldiers, but definitely crippled the movement. Definitely cast a long shadow on the Coney 2012, because now you really can't discuss Coney 2012 without discussing Jason Russell's breakdown. He's doing better now. He said that it took him about a week or two to get back and to find himself again. There's actually a great video I'm putting in my YouTube links um, called The Story. I think it's called The Story of Coney 2012. This internet historian did, and it's a great video. It's a great overview, and it has the interviews from Jason Russell where he talks about that breakdown. Was he cursed by Coney? Was the spell successful? Did Coney use ancient magic to take out an enemy who was using modern technology to stop him? Who knows? But it's definitely an interesting theory, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Next story we're going to look at is an interesting one. Again, it's fairly short, but I think it shows one of the problems that I have with modern UFOlogy. So apparently... There was some KGB documents that the CIA got a hold of. Now, right there, I'm like immediately suspect about this story because it already sounds a little too James Bondy-ish for me. But anyways, the CIA gets a copy of these KGB documents. All the articles I found said one of two things. One, President Gorbachev, President Mikhail Gorbachev, president of the Soviet Union at the time, believed that UFOs existed and more study needed to be done on them. And the UFO sites are like, see, look at this president of the USSR believes in UFOs. And yes, everyone believes in unidentified flying objects. And yes, we should do more investigating on them to find out if it is a plane or a duck or a balloon. I don't think Gorbachev is saying, when he says UFOs are real, he's not saying aliens are real. And that's a problem I see with a lot of conspiracy sites. He's just saying, yeah, we don't know what they are and we should figure it out. And there's a huge leap there between that and they're coming from another planet. And I do believe in aliens, but, you know, I've talked about that before on the show either. I don't think they come from other planets. I think they're from here. But but see, I, that's the thing. I could quibble all day long with people who believe in crop circles and uh, reptilians and Arcturians and Pleiadians and stuff like that. We can quibble about the details all day long. We're both idiots because we both don't have anything to back any of it up. I have my theories. They have their theories. But Gorbachev said that we should study UFOs. Which is, it, it, I mean, of course, you have a giant country and you have a bunch of nukes and you, you're at war with another country. Of course, you're going to know what's flying in your sky. But the, the in your life, that's not the whole story, because that would just be lame. I wouldn't just cover that. I would just waste your time for three minutes talking about it. Also in these documents came a story of KGB soldiers facing a UFO. And again, the UFO sites are like, oh my god, it's proof. I'm going to read you this story. And if you've ever done any research on UFOs or aliens, or ever watched an episode of The X-Files, or got stoned and watched Ancient Aliens, whatever your information is on aliens you tell me if this story sounds like any other event you've ever heard of and the reason why i say that because generally if it is a real if aliens are real if i see a tiger in the woods and 50 years later someone else sees a tiger in the woods we're going to describe the same thing we're going to be like yeah it's like a big cat it has these stripes if i see eight penguins carrying a keg I'm going to be like, oh, this is what they look like. There's eight of them. This is what a penguin looks like. They had a keg. And then a couple years later, you see eight penguins carrying a keg. Or just eight penguins and a keg sitting there. You're going to go, those penguins are awfully long-lived. And then you're going to be able to describe to me the same thing. That's the problem with aliens and UFOs is like they're constantly being described in different ways. And yet we're supposed to believe all of them. Anyways, I thought debunking aside, debunk all that stuff aside, I thought this was a funny story. But again, it has nothing to do. It's completely bonkers. The fact that any UFO site gives us any credence just diminishes the whole idea. Bunch of... Un, this, they don't even know when this happened. I, you're, now I'm angry. And I've realized how angry this story makes me. Because I had to read about it over and over and over again. And they're like, this is proof. And I don't get... It's so funny because now that I realize... I don't really get angry that much on this show. Or at least I don't show it. Anyways. Undated event. In an unknown location. Proof. Remember, this is proof. This is being held up as proof. Somewhere in Antarctica. 
So maybe there are penguins with a keg. These KGB agents, for whatever reason, are in Antarctica. And they start to see these glowing lights, these red, green, and yellow lights in the sky. In one of the articles, it said, for an unknown reason, someone picked up a SAM, so a surface air missile. For an unknown reason, someone picked up a surface air missile and fired it. Well, I'll tell you the reason why he fired it. It's not unknown. There's a big object floating around, flashing lights at you. And you're the KGB. You beat up shop owners. It's not like they're like, let's have a reasoned discussion with this orb. They're going to blow it up. They blow up everything. The KGB was like one of the most brutal secret police in world history. And they're like, I wonder why they did it. Because they're nuts. And also they're in Antarctica. There's not a lot to do there. That's why the penguins have the keg. Anyways, so the KGB shoot down this, this craft of blinking lights and it crashes. And then five aliens with large heads and large black eyes come out. And you're like... Jason, that is familiar. What are you talking about? Those are gray aliens. Everybody has seen those before. I've seen those in movies. Wait, hold on. Didn't let me finish. The five aliens then <laughs> merge Voltron style into a giant ball. So they go... Bleh! And like with 1991 <laughs> Terminator 2 special effects... Bleh! Not even that. 1991 Lawnmower Man special effects... Bleh! And begin spinning around as a giant ball. I have never in 30 years of researching UFO stuff encountered a story where five gray aliens turn into a ball. If this story was real, then all the, the, you'd encounter ball aliens constantly. Again, if it's real, it's real. And you would have common things among the sightings. The Roswell aliens weren't just all like their bodies just laying in the desert. And then it's like liquid metal. And they start like bloop, bloop, bloop and turn. I've never heard that before. This is obviously made up. And, and these websites, multiple websites, were running this story. It doesn't pass the smell test at all. Anyways, it gets stupider. It gets way stupider. So the ball's <laughs> spinning around now. The alien ball is like... Whoa, 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 whoa. It begins to buzz and hiss. I read that description a couple times. How? I'm going to try do it because I have the audio tools here. I'm going to record myself buzzing and hissing. And then we're going to lay it over each other and see, see what it sounds like. Okay, that's the buzz. Now we'll do a hiss. Okay, started to run out of breath on that one. So we have a buzz, we have a hiss. I'm going to layer them and we'll see if it makes... My, here's my theory, and I could be wrong because I won't know until I edit this. But I'm going to predict that one sound so heavily drowns out the other that you wouldn't be able to tell it was buzzing and hissing. Unless it was like, buzz, hiss, buzz, hiss, buzz, hiss, buzz, hiss. And in that case, it's just Skrillex. Like, in that case, whatever. But anyways, it's buzzing, it's hissing, and it's brilliant white. You're like, ah, I can't see, even though I'm in Antarctica and everything's white. This hurts their eyes. And again... Because it, that's not dumb enough. Multiple websites reported the story. The the ball alien, the ball of aliens, then goes, Psst. there's 25 soldiers, 25 KGB agents standing here. 23 of them turn in to something. Now, here was the difference I found between the websites. One of them said they turned to limestone. They just, Psst. And they basically either turned into statues of people made of limestone, perfectly carved, you can see their badges, or they just became like clumps of limestone. Two other websites I saw had a complete... Okay, and when I read that, I was like, I'm talking about this, and that is straight up stupid. I gotta talk about this, but that's stupid. It turns them into limestone. The other two websites said, and I, can't, I still can't figure out what, where they got this from, Stone poles. Now, when I think of a stone pole, I think of those things outside of like grocery stores and Walmarts to keep you from ramming your car into the store. You know, those big, basic stone pylons. Are they saying that these people became those? Are they saying they became like perfect cylinders of cement? 
What's a stone pole? Just say stone if they became lumpy. Or stone pole, I guess, if they actually became like a cylinder of stone. And then the two remaining KGB agents covered them with big yellow plastic covers so cars wouldn't know not to crash into them. They just left them there in Antarctica. And the two remaining KGB agents call up the the Russian people and said, hey, I know that you're thousands of miles away and we're in Antarctica, and our, but apparently our phones work. And the government came and got the limestone slash stone poles and they locked them up in a secret warehouse. The end. Okay. Then what? These are documents from the KGB. So it's not a story that just one of the survivors told. The document, if these are real KGB documents, they should be able to say, day seven. We continued testing on the stone poles. We realized you could drive a Subaru into them and they wouldn't crack. Testing will continue tomorrow. These are KGB files. They'd have access to the whole history of these stone poles. Do these stone poles... Is there a warehouse that you can't drive a forklift in because there's a bunch of poles, stone poles randomly in there? It's made up. It's obviously made up. It's funny because I give far more credence to the idea that Coney cast a voodoo spell on a guy than this. Yet, yet, this story I found across multiple websites... And I had to dig a bit for the Coney story. And like I said, TMZ reported it. And then I think someone else picked it up. That's uh, stone poles. Aliens that can merge into a big old object. But, you know, there are people... It's proof. It's proof. Because this article has the words KGB, CIA, and Gorbachev in it. It's proof. The state of... I am sorry I'm ranting. But the state of paranormal investigations and conspiracy in the world right now is in dire need of some rational thinking and i'm not the one to deliver it because i can barely string two words together the only reason why any of this makes sense is because i have to edit it if you if you stood in front of me and i had to talk about this stuff you'd be like why do you keep saying cut right in front of me but come on guys okay anyways that's enough of the kgb story that's driving me nuts we're gonna talk real quick actually not real quick because this story is actually quite funny i have to get my composure though and i have to get some more soda Okay, so I got some more soda, but I do have to say that I don't think I have enough time to record the next segment. And it's funny because if I edit this down, it might be around the a little bit shorter than normal length. But um, Thomas Dick, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Dick, I'll talk about him tomorrow because he it's a trip. It's a trip. But I've run out of time this episode. I, again, I like to keep him short, even if sometimes we have to bump stories back. But I hope that doesn't disappoint you. I got a little off on that. KGB story. I I pre- I had it prepared like, oh, here's this wacky event. But as I was revisiting it in my head, I'm like, this is the dumbest. This is so stupid and people believe this. Which is par for the course for this show. But man, it really struck a nerve. It really struck a nerve. But we'll save the other story for tomorrow. Dead Rabbit Radio at Gmail. You're like, oh, I want to know about those 22 trillion people. Don't worry, we'll get to it. Dead Rabbit Radio at Gmail.com is going to be your email address. You can also hit us up at Facebook.com slash Dead Rabbit Radio. Twitter is at Jason O. Carpenter. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. Okay, everyone, that was episode 121. This is a really interesting story for two reasons. One, this episode had a ton of additional content that I edited out. And a lot of people are always saying, you know, you should just let the episodes go as long as they go. Like, if it takes you a long time to cover it. But, hey, you know, I'm a podcast listener first. And so I try to keep it under a certain time limit. Originally, the time limit was 30 minutes, and then it went up to 35 minutes, and now it's at 40, and I'm good at 40. They can always be shorter. Nowadays, maybe 42 minutes, like every so often, but a lot of the episodes, they'll have like 50, 60 minutes of content. Not all of them, but a lot of them are a lot longer, and then I cut them down. It's just because time is important to us, right? And I don't think that the episode suffers from that. If you knew there was 10 minutes cut from this episode, you might be like, wow, like, what did he possibly cut? It's all interesting stuff. Well, first off, I always go through and cut out all the terrible jokes. That happens all the time. But there was a good 10 minutes removed from the Coney 2012 segment. I really went into that in my research. And it wasn't just, you're like, well, Jason, that was the least interesting part of the episode. I don't think so. I love both of these stories. Coney 2012, 
that, again, there's two segments to it. One, there's the whole movement of Coney 2012, which just as a slacktivist social movement, fascinating. And I think we see a lot of stuff nowadays that uses that as a template. It was one of the first ones where you could quote unquote mobilize social media to believe in something. Just change, you know, change your icon to like the flag of Ukraine. And now you feel like you've done enough, right? You wash your hands of any sort of social responsibility. That all started with Coney 2012. So that as a sociological link is deeply fascinating. But I had about an extra 10 minutes on Coney himself. And I remember when I was listening to the episode, I was like, oh, dude, I cut out a ton of stuff. And what it was, was I talked about actual like battles that his child soldiers were in and the tactics they used and how they were. I think if I remember correctly, they were starting to use like nowadays because he's still around. Right. Coney's still around. I believe he was still around when I was recording that. I think he might still be around now, but they were talking about drones, how these guys are. Wait, is Coney still around? I remember I cut out all of this stuff about battles that he'd been in and rituals that were performed and how he was... It was a lot more black magic stuff. It wasn't just it wasn't just boring stuff. I remember that I talked more about what his mother was involved in, her revolution, and how she was using black magic to set everything up. All of that stuff was parsed down to what you hear. So I cut out a lot of stuff, right? I do cut out the dumb jokes and I cut out the stuff where I can't really figure out the endings, but also just for time, I'll cut out I'll cut out interesting stuff. The episode's 22 minutes long. Nowadays, see, now that episodes are 40 minutes long, I would have been able to include all of that stuff. And it wasn't fluff. It was actually anti-fluff. It was super scary real life events that were going on. So I found that really fascinating stuff. And then the Coney 2012 thing, really, really interesting. I I love this episode. This again, remember earlier in the classics episode, I talked about how I would put three stories. If you you didn't listen to that one, I did a recent classics episode where I used to put three stories in each episode because I didn't know if the stories were strong enough on their own. Looking back, this one was supposed to have three. Remember at the ending, I go, "I, I, I can't even get to the third one. I was so caught up on the KGB thing. To think that a story about a real-life black magic sorcerer using a child army to cast a curse on a social media influencer, for me to think that wasn't interesting enough to talk about for 10 minutes, I don't know what was going through my head. And the second story, KGB vs. Aliens, is really the one I want to talk about here. Because what's so fascinating, I was listening to this episode, and I was like, I would not have the same take. I do think the story is dumb. I still think the story is fake. It's one of those things you will constantly hear in the paranormal community. The CIA believes that there was life on Mars. And you're like, what? And then they go, the CIA has a document called Adam and Eve, which talks about Adam and Eve. Come from. You're like, oh, okay. Let me explain what that is. The CIA basically is a information gathering machine. So they take this information and they look at it and they go, that's dumb. And then they don't throw it in the bin. They file it away. It doesn't mean they believe in it. It doesn't mean that they actually researched it. Sometimes these are p- reports that people sent in. People write their manifestos and send them into the CIA and the CIA will read it, maybe, right? They'll check it to see how loony you are, and then they file it away. Just in case, right? Just in case you go loony, just in case you need proof of that. It would be the same thing as if someone came into your house and said, Oh my God, you believe in vampires. You believe that there are vampires in the Pacific Northwest whose skin glitters in the sun. You're like, what? No. <laughs> First off, that was a gift. That was a gift from my niece. I don't read Twilight. Secondly, Team Edward all the way third. No, I don't believe that. That's fiction, right? I just happen to have that in my collection. So in the CIA collection, you have everything from real life subterfuge documents, right? To people who came from Mars or KGB versus aliens. So what this report says is that Mikhail Gorbachev, like if I remember correctly, I just listened to the episode not too long ago, but... Mikhail Gorbachev was informed of this KGB outpost that came under attack by aliens. And then the CIA got their hands on this document. Which, again, if you were the CIA, you would want this. 
you'd look at this and go, this isn't true. But let me say this. I don't think it's true because of the pedigree of it, because of how we came across it, because I know the CIA is just this vacuum that sucks up all this stuff. But in this episode, this is so interesting, because again, it shows how the show's grown. In this episode, I don't state any of that. I state, this story is not true because it doesn't sound like any story you've ever heard before. Which I totally disagree. That's wrong. That's wrong to believe that. You think about what we've covered since then. I go out of my way to find the weirdest UFO stories. Aliens that appear as box robots. Aliens that appear as hands coming out of nowhere, as in the Casablanca invasion. Um, Giant aliens, 13, 14 foot tall aliens, Bigfoots flying UFOs. Aliens with magic wands making UFOs appear. All of this stuff doesn't fit the lore. So I was wrong in saying that this what? Have you ever read a story before where a gray alien... <laughs> I mean, it's still a dumb story, right? But the three aliens merge into an orb and they're spinning around. I go, what? That's never happened before. This story isn't real. Fascinating. I don't have that belief anymore. So I don't think the story is real. I still don't think the story is real, but I want to say this. The reason why I don't think it's real now is because, well, for one, I just don't think it's real, right? Like sometimes you don't need to, you don't need to prove why you don't think something's real, but I don't believe the pedigree of it. I don't believe the pedigree of it. I understand why the CIA would want a copy of this, but I just don't believe that the document's real. But in the episode, I state over and over again, does this sound like a UFO story you've ever heard before? This story is fake because we've never heard of stuff like this before. That's wrong. That's wrong. That was actually not correct when I said that. And it shows how much I've grown over the course of the show because nowadays I purposely go out of my way to find the weirdest alien stories. I want the absolutely most bonkers alien stories. Bigfoot flying a UFO... Casablanca invasion, where a group of school kids were harassed by alien arms coming out of nowhere. Um, box robots walking underneath trees and shooting sparks out and stuff like that. I go out of my way to find the weirdest stories. So it was interesting to hear myself say things like, it needs to fit the lore. What? Do you, have you ever heard of a great alien, three great aliens forming into a ball and shooting beams around? What? I've never heard that before, therefore it's fake. That was very wrong-headed of me to say. I was wrong in that rationale. You know, I said, if these things are real, then they would follow these rules. And it's funny because nowadays, I will look at, very often, when we talk about paranormal stories, I will say, this is the lore, and this is how this story is different. So does it add to the lore? And I said very recently, I go... You look for things that aren't always part of the lore to make it more real. I go, if every person says the same things that we all know in Hollywood, right? You get abducted by an alien, you get anally probed, you get a chip in your neck and you've lost time. You have to ask yourself, did that really happen to them? Or did they watch so many science fiction movies that that's the story they made up? Because that's what they think is true. That's I said that like two weeks ago. Back on episode 121, I go, it has to fit the lore. It doesn't make sense. So I was wrong on this. I still think the story, I still think the story is completely ridiculous. But my rationale was wrong. And when I was listening, again, I thought this episode was so funny because I remember, I go, I remember that KGB versus Aliens episode. I couldn't even finish it. I was so riled up by that story. And what happens is I see this story pop up all the time on Reddit. People are always like, guys. Disclosure, smish closer. The CIA actually has a document. I'm like, damn it, that's not true. That document's not real. I don't believe that the doc... Well, the, someone typed it up. I don't think it's a real event. But not for the reasons why I said on that episode. So I just thought that was really interesting. It was also funny because I said... And I remember, I remember it clearly editing this when I go, what? They said there's a buzzing and a hissing noise. What? That's dumb. You couldn't tell one from the other. Here, I'm going to do it. And I did the two noises separately. And then I go, I'm going to edit it together. And I bet that you can't tell. And I remember clearly, I remember clearly when I was editing the episode, I go, oh no, you can totally, you can totally hear the buzzing and the hissing. And this just, 
how I feel about you guys and how I feel about the show. When I heard that you could tell the di- like you can hear it buzzing and hissing at the same time clearly. I remember I thought oh, I'm just going to edit that whole thing out. Like nobody knows that I recorded this. Like I said something, it turned out not to be true. <laughs> it turned out not to be true as I was saying it. I'm the only person who knows this and I remember thinking, "No, dude, put it in the episode and then people can see your thought process." People can see that you will say things and then prove yourself wrong and you're still willing to put it out there. And I don't know if anyone picked up on that, right? I don't know if anyone was like, Jason, good job, good job. You proved yourself wrong. But that was my rash. I could have clipped it all out, right? You never would have known it was in there. I could have just cut from, they hear a buzzing and hissy noise to the next part of the story, but I did it. And I I kept both elements in and then I combined them and you can clearly hear both sounds at the same time. And then I continue on saying, I haven't heard it yet because I haven't edited it, but I'm pretty sure you can't tell the difference. And you clearly could. And I had the option of editing that out and I said, no, no, I want the audience to hear that I was wrong. It was a, it was a conscious decision on my part. I go, no, I, wanna, I want them to hear that I got that one wrong. Could have clipped it out and nobody would have ever known, but... I, if someone else did that right, I would consider that dishonest. If another researcher... Well, I, I wouldn't have known, right? But I just... I'm gonna keep it in there. I'm gonna keep it in there. I love this episode for two reasons now. One, because I love the story about the KGB and the aliens. I love the Coney part. I didn't even remember that was in this episode. But... Um, and then I just love to see how the show's grown and how I've grown, right? That's not fair to say, I've never heard this story. I've never heard these type of elements before. Therefore, it's false. When that's just not true. The world of paranormal is always exciting. And I will admit when I'm wrong. I'm right. I'm right. This story's fake. But I was wrong in the way I presented it. And I still like this story. And I do like, I don't mean to do it, but those episodes where I'm like, I'm done, where I have like a Three stories planned that I never get to the third story. For whatever reason, I find those stories very comfortable. It make I never plan it out that way. But to me, it makes the show feel very organic. Right? I did that recently where I was going to talk about... Uh, I don't remember what it was. Oh, the phone call. And I started talking about my grandma. And it just makes the story show feel really organic. Because it's not planned out that way. It just makes it feel like, again, two friends talking. Right? You don't always get to that main subject you're going to talk about. But yeah, I really love this episode of KGB vs. Aliens. Guys, have a great one. We'll be back with one more Classics episode tomorrow. Hope you guys stay tuned. And I will see you back live with new episodes very, very soon.